Uh, we're going, like I said, we're, we were planning on shortening our format. Ain't working out that way this yeah. time. But uh, what happens if you have an extra person? Well, no, we did that. We do this even when we're by ourselves. Like we only we're get terrible at tough being short. Most of the week we spend being quiet. Ben drawing at work. Me sitting in front of a computer troubleshooting servers. Uh, so we don't get a lot of time to actually get out and just talk about the things that we love culturally. And uh, so we sit down and we talk way too much. But I think this is where we kind of shine. We, we sit down in front of the camera, we talk to you people, and we just kind of get it out there and talk about the things we love. Uh, kind of like almost being at a convention, but right here in a small little room, sitting, yeah. bringing Mike in and stuff like that. We may, uh, I'm going to see if we can maybe get Jim. I just refer to him as the eponymous Jim. Yeah, I mean, like even his face makes an amazing logo. Uh, Jim is a character. You, you, he, he, Who would want to play a game with Jim? Who wouldn't want to play a game with Jim? Yeah. But yeah, no, I went last year. It was a like I had an absolute blast. It's so um, this means we get to go to Fogo. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. There's there's a story behind that one. The group that I went with went to Fogo de Chao. It's a Brazilian steakhouse in Indianapolis where it's about a hundred dollar meal and it, it's all you can eat. And there's like nine different cuts of meat. If you're a vegetarian, you don't want to be anywhere near that building. They do have a salad bar. Yeah, but what's the point? <laughs> You don't make friends with salad. Uh, so I'm gonna get so much hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We went to we, so our group went to Fogo, and all of us like we we almost had to crawl back to the hotel. We were so full. For the rest of the trip, we referred to going to the bathroom as going to drop twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, so although oh, no, that suggests that you went and fished it out later. No, no the um, so last year or earlier this year, you better have had to flush that thing thing three fucking times to get it all down. <laughs> it looked up and called me, mommy. Cut it with a coat hanger to get it down. <laughs> earlier this year, uh, my Ben and I went with our uh, went with our sister and her fiance to Vegas. And I mean, went for the gambling. Ben went for the like to the you know to go to Vegas so we can cross it off the bucket list. I'm basically flipping through like you know the restaurants in the area and what have you, and I saw Fogo de Chao. I immediately look up, gather the three of them, and I'm like, at some point this week we are going here. This is a thing. This is happening. End of story. That basically my only asks for though for that trip was that. And doing anything that involved firing automatic weapons. Which we because, did. well, we're in the States, why the fuck not? Vegas was fun, and it was another trip where I spent a lot more money than I probably had. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? Probably. <laughs> yeah, that hurt. <laughs> oh, uh, when I'm in Alberta, uh, I'm going to be performing a comedy slash storytelling routine in front of about 250 people. So that's going to be something that's a little bit new for me. Huh. Uh, I'm used to singing in front of people, but not uh, not really doing uh, a speaking or comedy routine. Although I, I, I think I did pretty well last year, but that was all game mastering stuff. Mm -hmm. It was ad lib and stuff. This is actually something I wrote. Uh, oh, speaking of which, um, uh, I wanted to uh, announce that probably not before Jim Con this year, but probably before Jim Con next year as a fundraising. Uh, Initiative for uh, uh, Child's Play and for Jim Con. Uh, I wanted to do a story slam, a GM story slam, though, uh, where a bunch of uh, GMs get together and have a competition uh, for storytelling, where the crowd parti uh, crowd participates, or maybe judges participate uh, by throwing up either critical success or critical failure as the GM is relating a topical story and they have to modify the story based on what signs the people are throwing up. Half the money would go to Jim Con, half the money would go to Child's Play and buy stuff off of that. Um, I watched The Lone Ranger when I was a kid. Don't watch the movie. It will, it will ruin your childhood. Uh, another good series that, uh, well, I, for uh, manga that I read recently, uh, Gunslinger Girl. Oh, yes. Um, Probably one of my favorites, right up there with Dragon. Basically, if you like the kind of ride that Full Metal Alchemist takes you on, in terms of like uh, emotional roller coaster, Gunslinger Girl is a good one. There's a group in Winnipeg called River City Jedi that, and this is essentially just a shout out to them. 
um, they do um, essentially sparring and um, sparring and training with LED lightsabers, and these things are specifically designed that you can spar with them. I told Duncan that you're in a Jedi club and you <laughs> swing lightsabers. He started hitting Mikey with sticks. <laughs> 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 it's uh, very violent second hand! That brings me back to our childhood. Ben and I used to spar with Shania, and there, we actually well, had a couple of videos. And before that, that it used to be chunks of the snow fence. Dad used to get mad. But a lot of these guys do have like actual martial arts experience. Uh, I know one of the... Ex Duncan uh, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> they essentially get a lot of their training materials online from the Terra Prime Lightsaber Academy. And they essentially took real like martial arts, uh, martial arts techniques applied them to the to the fluff and the terminology from the Star Wars mythos and basically created a martial art. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's like basically it was one of those cases where I'm like, wait, you actually got you guys actually could spar with these? I'm in. Yeah, they're much better than the uh, old um uh cylinder cone thing. Oh yeah, um, Ben and I used to used to fight with ones that we got for uh, we got them for Christmas one yeah. year where it was like you push a handle down you flick your wrist yeah and um, we ended up actually breaking one because we were fighting in the fighting in the middle of winter I was gonna say that sounds dirty but then you said you broke it <laughs> that's not good yeah. remember when you took her cousins <laughs> oh what? yeah no my, ben, ben and I were Ben and I were sparring it on the floor yeah, like, yeah like basically when me and my brother when we used to spar um, you know, it's all fun and games until somebody gets it right across the head or, you know, <laughs> right across the... <laughs> or, Speaking of which, Shania across the face really fucking hurts. But, uh... Isn't that your sister? No, that's it's the bamboo practice sword used for kendo. Oh! But, yeah, so basically, what, what would, the, the fights would usually end with one of us wins, the other one is <laughs> into, sent into berserker rage because that fucking hurts! Yep. So after one such match... Um, I beat him in a match. I'm not sure you're. No, what it, what it was was the Ben and I were Ben and I were sparring. Our fights usually would take the entire yard. Like we would be like running and jumping and like swinging. And He's shit. bigger than me at the time. Of course, I'm gonna fucking run. I'm bigger than you now. Anyway, <laughs> <Not> uh, <bigger. laughs> yeah, fair point. Um, so anyway, our our young cousin was watching us. Ben and I would when we sparred, we had a rule: you hit the um, you know. You hit the leg, you can't stand on the leg. You hit both legs, you drop to your knees and fight from your knees. If you hit the arm, you can't use your arm. That standard shit. Any shot to the head and torso is a kill. So Ben manages to disable both my legs, and you know he's he's holding off. Like he's he's way way back. I can't get anywhere near him. I thought I thought this was a rage hit. No, no, this was the this was the I'm trying like I'm trying to end this. I throw the I throw the lightsaber and I. Mistime my release. Well, yeah, because you threw it like this. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I whip it and handle. <laughs> yeah, the hand. <laughs> Boy, was this that mad? Oh, almost immediately, like this big hematoma just grew on his forehead. It looked like someone like stretched the skin out and wrapped a goose egg in it. Mm -hmm. It was growing another head. Pretty much. <laughs> that reminds me of that time I took a hard ball to the head. Probably explains a lot now. Yeah, yeah, no. The, with the sheer amount of head injuries that this guy has sustained, it kind of explains a lot of his current personality, but it's also amazing that he's as cognizant as he is. You've <laughs> taken barbed wire to the eye, the hard ball to the temple, the iron ring to the forehead, the um, the wagon wheel to the back of the head, because it was forced, you know, we were fighting a, a, I I fell on my back. head off. I, I, we, when we were running across bales, I fell off and landed on my head. Yeah. But yeah, well, you can't see it. But I, I cat's it. just sitting here stunned. No, no. <laughs> last last recording yeah, that we made, we, we talked yeah. about how often people on the farm get hurt. I didn't well, realize it was because of stupidity. <laughs> well, with well us, yeah. I thought it was just dangerous work. No! We're running across hay bales throwing lightsabers at each other. Yeah, are, are we using things? foam? No! We're using wood! No, when we're young, <laughs> it's stupidity. But we've got people like our father, who, as or as I or as I describe him, Jack of all trades, master of most. Um he loses a lot of fights with a staple saw. <laughs> Zing! That's the oh. best way I could put it. Um Actually, uh from the time of the uh, last time we made a vlog, and I you know, I went like Oh, a saw, a saw, a saw. Well, he uh, he has since cut himself again on another fucking saw. Yeah. 
Just his index finger this time, I believe. Oh, that's not good. That's the worst finger to cut. Well, it was uh, the, um, yeah. I made the lamp stop buzzing with my ninja powers. Because of maintenance. Oh, yeah. I'm a, ser I'm a server analyst. In no way are server analysts <laughs> supposed to take a trip across the city to the warehouse to plug an Ethernet cable into a printer. Never, <laughs> ever, ever <laughs> make your server analysts do this. Not appropriate. For some reason, sticky noted to almost every cubicle at the warehouse is the name of me and one other guy with our phone <laughs> extension. That's a lot of work. See, here's the thing. On one hand, it's great that you're, you know, it's great that you're so highly thought of that they think to call you first. On the other hand, and it 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 lets me know that a I'm good at my job and b I'm nice to people, which is actually pretty rare in the information technology field. It is I like being nice to people. I like helping people. So I like the job and I like the fact that people think I'm doing it well and they think I'm helpful. It's it, it's fulfilling to me. But in my current position, there's a lot of things I have to do that I can't get to if I'm doing other people's jobs, which is that's strange. On, on the flip side, that also could be a sign that you are considered one of the only two competent people in that building. Not true. I think it's the fact that I'm approachable. I think that's entirely it. A lot of people in IT are very stressed out because IT departments are always understaffed. Always understaffed. Because we're considered a cost center instead of basically we are your money going from one place to another. They don't, be, uh, the business types don't see it that way. But, no, it's just the way it is. So that's why we're always understaffed. We're always understaffed. We've always got too much work. People get stressed out. And a lot of people can't handle that stress. I'm a former soldier, so I can handle a lot more stress than your average person, which means that I can remain friendly in incredibly bad situations, like being sent to plug in a printer when it's really not the best thing to, for me to be doing. Bedside manner. I mean, one of my training as a medic, so that's essentially it. Oh, board games. Have you guys played any new board games recently? I picked up the new Dominion expansion a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago. Still haven't had a chance to play it. Uh, come hell or high water, I'm playing it tomorrow at a like a uh, like a work function. But the um, I can't remember what I did this week. <laughs> God, what else? <laughs> Kraken, uh, Kraken. No, no, this week uh, it's Wisers. Wise, yeah. oh, Wisers, very nice by the way. It is probably my second favorite to Forty Creek, which is also which is uh, mm. Eclipse is fun. Um, played that with a couple of friends a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's basically it's like a resource. It's kind of like resource management, exploration, civilization building. It's civilization in space Ooh. essentially. Last week we were, or not last week. Well, last time we did this, we were talking about the boldly flee. Yes, boldly uh, flee. I went and watched the commentary because you know that's what I do when I paint stuff. And uh, yeah, seven fucking hours of commentary by the way. Really. Yeah. Isn't it only a three hour movie? Two separate commentaries. Oh. One from each brother. Oh. But, uh, so, anyways, turns out that, guess how long it took them to make that movie? How long? Okay, well, uh, the Kikassia, I think they did over a weekend. Uh, and Suburban Nights. Suburban Nights, I actually can't remember how long it took for them to do that. But, okay, a three and a half hour movie. You saw how much stuff was in that movie. Oh, yeah, special, shot, special, special effects, effects and scripted stuff. All of that was shot in six days. How the hell did they memorize their lines and shoot it in six days? Some of them didn't memorize their lines. Uh, cue cards? Uh, I think it was just, like, barely. Like, they, like <laughs> basically, like, like <laughs> Doug is a fucking machine. <laughs> <laughs> like it's 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 insane. Well, it's the, uh, and uh, yeah, the commentary was actually it's uh, interesting how they went all about it. And it's just uh, the very different perspectives between the two brothers.